What makes a great story? Oh my God, what makes a great story? Wow, that's a good question. I have a friend who's like a real writer writer and he always gets on me because I don't, I don't care a lot about plot. Uh, and I think there's probably two camps, maybe. There's people who care about character and there are people who care about plot. And I don't know if, if, that's, if that's part of it. Um, I think like, I think it just has to be, there has to be a, a reality to it. I think that, that for me, rather than like, you know, it's funny because uh, I was just talking to my students about this. There has been this thing in recent years, and it's not new, but I would say in the last five to seven years, where the value of a story is related directly to whether or not the audience can cannot anticipate what the ending is going to be. In other words, the twist has become so suddenly the gold standard of what a, a great story. In other words, if I didn't see it coming, that's what makes it a great story. You got me. You know, that's what makes it a great story. And I feel like that's kind of cheap, you know, in a way. So I feel like it has to be character-based, that the characters have to be real first. And I'll almost forgive a plot that is not so clever if the characters are, are strong and real. That's, that's, to me, that's my standard, at least now. So, right, so if the characters seem too much like they're acting, quote unquote, yeah. even though it must, it's a great story and you didn't see the ending coming, to you, that doesn't. That I doesn't think get you? I, I think characters that serve the plot are less interesting than character than than characters that motivate plot. Like there's there's a certain philosophy. I'm sure I'm, I'm certain because you guys have interviewed so many writers. But you know, I think f whether it's easy for me or it's just something I happen to subscribe to. But I feel like if you can create a character first, that and create a character in a certain number of situations and not necessarily and not necessarily outline the entire movie, although it depends on the movie, but if you have a full character that's real, that you've created, and then you put something in front of them, in a way they will begin to write the movie because you know how they're gonna to react to whatever you put in front of them because they're now these dimensional characters as opposed to let's have this happen, let's have this happen, let's have this happen, and we'll just make sure that they do these things that I've you know, preordained and I think that's what creates a feeling of artifice or you've seen it all before or boring, I think. And, and so to me, if you create a real character, then whatever happens as a result of those characters interacting is bound to be more interesting than somebody, something that's just been constructed. Like I, I was attached to a, a big studio movie not too long ago and the script was green lit and everybody loved it. And I was reading this thing and I was like, I don't understand this. Like, and this is not a complicated movie. This was like a movie with dinosaurs and fighting and all that. I'm reading this thing and I'm like, why is this guy do why is this guy doing this? And I went to the writer and I said, you know what, this doesn't really make much sense. You 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 in the in the in the first act you talked about how this guy was scared of heights. There was a whole dialogue about he was scared of climbing the mountain. And then later he's like on a tightrope fighting a pterodactyl. Like, why, <laughs> why, why what's going on with that? And he goes, I just thought that tightrope thing was cool. And I was like, yeah but it doesn't make any sense. You understand, it's like, you know, you set up this guy, so there's gotta be, you, you can't just put stuff in because it's cool. I mean, people do it all the time, but as a director of this thing, uh, I was looking at it like, well, how am I supposed to direct this with any kind of confidence or authority if I don't believe this thing? And so I think there's a lot of writing that's just like, well, let's be cool if this happens, and let's have this happen, that'd be cool too, and you have this pile up of cool shit but that doesn't have any resonance because it's not based in any kind of reality or at least any kind of consistency or something like that. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's, that's something. It does. So the character's quote arc didn't, didn't cross over to the tightrope scene? Like, was yeah. there, did the character go to a fear-based weekend right, or something? Right, or, 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 or no? just to have him acknowledge the mm. fact that, you know, when he got to the tightrope scene, that he was still scared, but was overcome. You know what I mean? It's like, right. but it's almost this um, uh, negligence, not even negligence, it's almost like apathy. Like who cares whether it's consistent? Who cares whether it makes sense as long as it's cool? And um, I think the coolest movies that have the coolest shit still um, are, are weighted or, or, or rooted in some sort of reality that they, the writer has believed and has maintained as opposed to just um, an assembly of things that, that, that just happen to be exciting but don't really 
either trace back to something or connect or make sense for the character. That's really what it is. Does it make sense for the character? Would he do that, you know? Um, so like the example I always give my students is that like if we're walking along the street and all of a sudden a mugger jumps out with a gun and grabs your bag and runs, and that's all we have in terms of like, it's the only idea we could come up with in terms of plot. The next scene is if we know who we are, we know what's going to happen. Like if you, if for me, like if the mugger pulls out a gun, I'll probably, you know, fall down on the ground and cry and weep and hope for it to be over. On the other hand, if I had created, like if you're, you're a former cop or you were in the war or, Navy SEAL, right? or whatever, you know, <laughs> or somebody who's like been, you know, mugged a couple of times and now carries like brass knuckles and mace, whatever the deal, whatever you've set up, what happens as a result of that mugger pulling the gun and grabbing thing and running, it's either becomes a chase or it becomes us going to a bar and crying together or whatever it is, but at least you know, or it's a fight or whatever it is, but you don't have to have the pressure of, okay, and now I've got to come up with the next thing. Now I've got to come up with the next thing because if the character is built, then it will dictate to you in a way what, what will happen, which is actually less pressure on the writer because now you don't have the burden of having to make up every goddamn thing. The characters are in fact writing the movie to a certain extent. Yeah. They talk about having that dialogue test where someone's just reading a character and then people need to try to figure out who's speaking and if your character is authentic enough we, we should all know. You should be able to identify. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact I, there are things like for example there were situations where when, when uh, my writing partner Jim and I were first coming up with one of our films La Cucaracha way back in the 90s one of the first images that came to mind was this idea of a man in a wheelchair in almost this true grit sort of scenario where he was like rolling into this town like guns blazing in a wheelchair. That was the first idea in Mexico. We didn't even know how, how it got there, but that was the image. And I was like, holy shit, that's amazing. We got to make this move. We got to write this. We got to figure out. And the irony was by the time we had created really this character and this scenario of this writer who goes down to Mexico who's really not a tough guy at all and everything goes wrong, by the time we got to this finale, which was the seed of the whole thing, as much as we wanted this badass thing to happen, it didn't make any sense anymore. It was like too big. It was, it was out of character. It didn't make sense that this would happen. He wouldn't do this. And we kept trying to like force ourselves into writing this thing and it was like no it's it's not going to be that because that's not that's not true to the thing that we actually wrote so i mean it depends on your philosophy I, a studio is not going to give a shit about that a studio's going to say put the fucking wheelchair thing in because that's awesome <laughs> uh -huh. but a but a writer with any kind of conscience is going to be like either go no that doesn't work or they're going to have to really find a way to justify i always heard that um that that was Hitchcock's thing, that he would come up with a series of set pieces. Sorry. No, that's okay. I always heard that Hitchcock basically came up with a, set, a sequence of really cool set pieces, like I want to chase across the faces of Mount Rushmore, but I don't know how it happens. And then he would lay it on the writer to somehow get, you know, I want a Mount Rushmore thing, I want a crop dusting thing, that all that'll be awesome. I want to stage those and shoot those things. I don't know how the hell it happens, and now it's your job, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Writer, to figure out how to make it make sense. Of course, he had the luxury of being able to do that. The writer still had to figure it out, though. The writer still, and when you watch North by Northwest, you you look at it and you're like, wow, that's a lot of like effort to kill this guy. Really, they're gonna they're gonna bring him out to a cornfield and they're gonna try to kill him with a crop duster. Why doesn't somebody just pop out and shoot the guy? Isn't that, isn't that easier? Shouldn't there just be a sniper in the Why is there a crop duster? Well, it's because Hitchcock came up with this awesome idea and the, and the writer is just basically going, okay, well, if I maneuver this enough, maybe no one will <laughs> notice that it's insane. Um, so I don't know. I guess, it, I guess it really does depend on, on the philosophy of the writer or the filmmaker.